Hi everyone, I hope that you are all well. I'm sorry that I can't be with you in person today, but it's nice to be able to spend some time with you virtually. And I think uh, a year on of dealing with all the challenges we face, it's an important time for us to, to look back and reflect upon what we've learned and how do we emerge from this as better leaders, as better companies, as, an, as, as a better industry. And I think there are probably I, I took away three lessons from the last year. The first one was really um, the power and the importance of purpose. And you know, at IHG, our purpose is true hospitality for good. And that's never been more important than in the past year, and basically through the lens of what does good look like and how do we do good? Um, how can we address all the challenges that, that confronted us? And you know, I thought about our, our stakeholders, customers, owners, colleagues, governments around the world. And, you know, first with our customers, it was make sure that they were treated right, make sure that they were treated to a safe stay and understood everything that we were doing to ensure their safety and security as we were managing through the challenges. Clearly then looking after our colleagues and that was in multiple ways. First, it was getting new operating procedures in place in the hotels and training and protective equipment and redesigning our properties from buffets to, to front desks, but really making sure they were set up to be successful but most importantly, be safe. I think that it was our owners and recognizing that we work with thousands of small business owners around the world who are facing the toughest challenges that they've ever seen before. How do we help them get through the crisis? How do we ensure that they have the liquidity they need to be able to operate their businesses and keep people employed? And that's where we focused on with my peers on advocacy, talking to governments around the world to get those programs set up to protect colleagues with furloughs or the PPP scheme in the United States and things in other markets around the world too. So making sure that our owners got through this so that we could have a healthy industry when we exited. I think the last stakeholders were clearly governments in engaging with them in a very thoughtful way, talking about the importance of our industry, the importance of how many people we employ, how we impact GDP growth, and continue to engage on them on solutions. And again, that's from housing frontline workers to helping with vaccinations, but how do we reopen this industry too? And so, you know, I think our purpose of true hospitality for good, you know, helped guide me and my team about all the decisions we had to make. And I, I'd say, with the lens of time, how do people look back and said, they did good. They did the right thing. They made a difference. I think the next thing was really about leadership. Uh, and I think we've all, you know, learned a number of leadership lessons. And I think the most important things I took away really were authenticity and the importance and power of communication. First, it was just being authentic with everyone and talking to them about the challenges we're collectively facing through some of the most uncertain times we've ever faced but also being human and making sure people recognize that you know, we cared about them as individuals and looking after their health and well-being. And, and it was the power of communication, I think, that helped us get through this. And, and again, I've learned to change what I do moving forward. Regular, frequent communication, very personable, very transparent, um, you know, doing calls for, you know, that video calls for thousands of colleagues around the world and taking questions live, real time. So they could ask what they wanted, what was on their mind to make sure that everyone understood we were gonna get through this. And, and that, that's the, probably the last lesson to me that I saw, was just the resilience of this industry. And it's an amazing, we've bounced back from the financial crisis from 9-11, and this industry will come back. We are seeing that, that hunger and that demand for travel as vaccines begin to be administered and as markets reopen. We know that business travel will come back and groups, meetings, and events will come back and leisure travel will be the lead on this. But that's exciting to see. But we have to work together as an industry. And so whether it's hotel company to hotel company or more broadly airlines or crews, we have to work together to help this industry get through these challenges. But we are incredibly resilient. The desire for travel is there. It will come back time and time again. So again, sorry that I'm not with you all, and I wish you an amazing event and look forward to seeing you uh, when we be in traveling again. Take care. Hello to the WTTC Global Summit. I'm sorry I can't be with you in person today, and I'm looking forward to being there next year, face to face. Today, I wanted to share a few learnings uh, from the COVID crisis, uh, as well as implications for our industry and for the world. I would just start by recognizing that it's clearly been a challenging year for all of us. There have been a lot of lows and a lot of challenges, but also a lot of highs. For me personally, 2020 was the year that after 18 years of engagement, I finally got married. And if you had told me that I would be celebrating uh, from Europe 
with my family in the U.S. over Zoom the day of my wedding, I don't think I would have believed it. But there was such a joy and perfection uh, in the day. And I think that that was one of the lessons of COVID and of this last year, which is enjoying those small moments of joy. But for us professionally, it has been very challenging. All companies around the world have had to figure out how do we take care of our employees in the midst of this crisis. At Expedia Group, we've always had a global workforce and flexible working policies. But with the COVID crisis and the need for people to be working from home, we did have to rethink the way that we were working. And especially for our customer service teams who were on the front line, answering the phones for our customers and travelers and our partners, especially at the height of COVID. So we put in place flexibility. We allowed people to work reduced working hours if they needed to. We made sure that they had the equipment at home so that people were able to do their jobs from home. But doing work from a screen all the time is clearly tiring. And Zoom fatigue is happening more and more around the world. We see the numbers of depressions going up all over the world. And so one of the things we've focused on at Expedia Group is not only how do we help our employees be able to do their jobs from home, but how do we help them with their mental wellness? We put in place a mental wellness hub. We extended our employee assistance program, which allows employees to get easy access to therapy services. In my division, we put in place meeting free Fridays so that people would have a day where they could have think time because so much of the other time was spent in meetings. And we put in place a program called Junior Journeys, which was effectively story time uh, so that parent, working parents who had children at home could have their children have a story read to them by someone else around the world. So the way that we supported each other and our employees was, you know, has been very critical to getting through this. But obviously it's also about supporting our industry and our customers and our partners. And this crisis really has brought our industry together in ways we hadn't seen before. I'd always thought that we punched below our weight in terms of being an industry that accounts for 10% of global GDP. And I think this, this crisis really rallied us to speak with one voice. And when I look at what WTTC has done, creating safe travels with global standardized protocols and stamps for health and safety measures, it has had an impact. And at Expedia Group, we've tried to contribute to bring demand back to our supply partners who need it with our uh, relief and recovery program, where we've put aside $275 million to help our partners. Across all industries, we've seen digital acceleration. This is true outside of travel, but it's especially true in travel. And the beauty of digitization is that it allows you, us to reverse or to accelerate super quickly. And what the whole industry found at the start of the pandemic is that anything manual without self-service or digital options were the biggest problems. Many of us faced a tsunami of calls and a deluge of customer support issues. We had to take a machine that was built to go in forward gear and take it into reverse three times as fast. And at Expedia Group and across the travel industry, we've used the time since last year to innovate and to add self-service everywhere. I'm often asked what my learnings have been around business travel because I run our corporate travel division. Fundamentally, I believe that people do business with people and there is a human need for connections, whether that's with colleagues from the same company or building relationships with clients or suppliers outside of your company. And as I've talked to our corporate clients, what I've heard over and over is that they're actually now thinking of travel less as a cost or a line item and more as an investment for growth. And that's really good news for all of us in the travel industry. You know, when I think about what the pandemic has taught me, I would say many of the lessons were things I already knew, but the pandemic has really crystallized my thinking. One is the importance of communicating clearly, simply, and often. That's what our teams need. The second 
is prioritizing, brutally removing the nice to haves and just focusing on the must haves. Third is the importance of resilience and self care, both physically and mentally. But I, would, I think actually the one that surprised me most was that the clarity of the crisis removed organizational silos or organizational boundaries. Because when we had one focus, suddenly we were operating as one organization. For the world, one of the burning platforms that we do need to address is the uneven impact the pandemic has had on women. Last year, McKinsey calculated that women's jobs were 1.8 times more likely to be vulnerable to the COVID pandemic than men's jobs. Women make up 39% of the global workforce, but they account for only for 54% of the overall job losses. And it's been estimated that we have lost 40 years of progress with the impact of women on the workforce in COVID. Travel is 10% of the world's GDP, and we account for one in 10 jobs. And in the five years before COVID, we accounted for one in five newly created jobs. So we have a real role to play in helping healing the world of the issues that we've seen in the gender divide. So in conclusion, former American President John F. Kennedy once remarked that the word crisis in Mandarin is composed of two characters, one meaning danger and the other opportunity. If 2020 was a year of crisis for our industry, I believe that 2021 is the year of opportunity. When we look at the scale and the speed of vaccine rollout, when we look at what public and private partnerships have been able to do to start to get travel on the path to recovery. And of course, the real need, the human need to meet people in person and not just by video. We know that we have a role to play in healing the world. And I can't wait to see what we're gonna do in the next year and then to be with all of you next year uh, to celebrate the successes we will have had as an industry in 2021. Thank you.